it's really an inner game. And I think that's what's missing for us today. Everybody's focusing on the outside world and how there's a lot of things in the outside world you'll never be able to control. You can influence, but you can't control it. Your mind, your emotions, your body. You have 100% control over what you do with these things. And that's where the game is won. You win the inner game, then you win the outer game. I never had any success in sports until I first had them in my mind. I learned to do creative visualization, visualizing things that hadn't happened yet, but that I wanted to have. Remember, fear is physical. You feel it in your throat or your gut. So is courage. Courage doesn't mean you're not afraid. It just means you're strong enough you push through in spite of the fear, right? When you push your mind to go beyond what's comfortable, you feel a strength inside you, and that strength will help you to change your body, your emotions, your relationships, whatever. Vividly imagined experiences, your brain can't tell the difference. I went back to The only thing I did different was I did the visualization daily as part of my routine. Mm -hmm. And that year I went from the previous year, I quit the football team, didn't play, to one year later, ended my sophomore year as the most valuable. I learned at a young age, the power of the mind. Uh, I really learned to believe that you know, in life, it's an insight. You know, too often, you're out there, you're pointing the finger. I, I didn't make it because that person. I didn't make it because of that coach. The reason you don't make it is because you do not have the mastery and control of your emotions and your mental mind to get yourself to do the stuff you need to do to get the results. And that was my breakthrough moment. And that was my breakthrough tool that would blow your mind how your brain is conditioned or primed by the environment and how many people's brains live in fear. Most people just don't understand that you are being primed all the time and unless you prime yourself, you're gonna be primed by the environment. Leaders anticipate, losers react. If you can anticipate what's coming, you can really take advantage. If you wait till it hits you, you're in trouble. I saw this. That psychological difference is the number one thing I work with people on because unless you expand your identity, you're gonna basically keep where you are. You might improve a little or not. You might go up and down a bit, but you're gonna stay within a realm. If you're gonna have an explosive breakthrough to another level physically, mentally, financially, spiritually, then we gotta not only give you the tools, we gotta shift that internal sense of who you really are and have you find that you are more than anything that's ever happened to you, that you can handle whatever shows up, even if it's incredibly scary or uncomfortable.
That's usually not that hard to find. Michael Jordan making a thousand shots before you take a break every single day, six days a week. So you look at Jordan or you look at, you know, LeBron or you look at anybody who's the best in the world at what they do and you go, aren't they lucky? But if you actually study them, you'll see they're doing things. They're practicing in private things that make them certain in public and they get rewarded for what they do in public. Yeah. When people say to me, I have no self-esteem. I hate that word. So overused and abused. I don't have any self-esteem because when I was growing up, my parents said these terrible things and those terrible things. And I said, isn't it convenient you only remember those things? Well, they said a million things, but suddenly you've honed in on those. But let's get real. Someone can tell you your whole life you're a piece of crap, but you can say, screw you, read between the lines and make your life work. Someone can tell you your whole life you're beautiful, you're intelligent, you're the smartest person in the world, and you don't believe it. Because self-esteem doesn't come from what people say about you. Self-esteem is earned within yourself. It's esteem for yourself, which only comes by doing things that are incredibly difficult. And then your brain goes, this is who I am. The firewalk was again giving you an experience of something that seemed difficult or impossible and then you get yourself to do it and your brain goes, wait a second, if I could do that, what else could I get myself to do? That psychological shift is the most important shift that people can make. It's a shift in your identity. Most people's identity, their labels for themselves, who they think they are, has been based on their past and often many years ago. And so they don't update it. So the, the metaphor I'd give for identity is like, it's your comfort zone. It's not your goals.